it's March, in a few weeks it will be spring, and you know what that means. We're getting closer and closer to being able to wave goodbye to the supermarket and say hello to homegrown food. March is the busiest time of year when it comes to sowing seeds, so in this video I'll run through the list of what you can sow this month to give yourself a bumper harvest in the summer. The first seed I'm going to recommend is difficult to find at the supermarket, but it is great for bulking out dinners and providing fresh salad leaves. Of course, I'm talking about chard, which is my chicken's favourite ever vegetable, and back when I couldn't eat many carbohydrates, including potatoes, I'd use these instead in stews and roast dinners. Chard grows pretty quickly and germinates quite well, so I'm going to sow them into these small pots rather than into trays or modules. I'll fill my pots with a sea starting mix, which I explained how to make in a recent video, but if you like, you can just use your favourite seed compost. And then I'll make a small hole using a pencil and I'll make it reasonably deep, probably about an inch as these seeds are pretty chunky. And as a rule of thumb, we like to sow seeds twice as deep as they are wide. Then I'll pop a single seed into each hole and cover it with more mix. Those of you who know me will know that I love to bottom water, as this doesn't disturb the seeds. So for a tray like this, I'll fill another one up with water and then give it a good dunk. I'd normally take them inside and leave them for about a week to germinate and then move them to a bright location. Well, it looks like my greenhouse is going to be warmer than my actual house for the next couple of weeks, so I guess I'll just leave these here with a cover on top to trap humidity. Chard is pretty hardy, which means once seedlings are more substantial, they should be able to survive some cold weather, although young seedlings will need protection from frost. However, I did sow some this time last year and left them in their pots and outside all winter, and they're looking just fine, although they are a little bit root bound. While these ones have been outside all winter without any cover, and they're doing just fine, and giving my girls a little treat until the spring. Come on. Nope, come on. The next seeds I recommend for March are beetroot and kale, pretty much for the same reason as chard, as they're both hardy crops that prefer cooler weather. But you might have noticed that beetroot seeds look an awful lot like chard seeds, and that's because they're very closely related. So I'll sow my beetroot seeds just like I would my chard. However, if we take a look at things like kale, you'll notice that the seeds are completely different. Kale is a brassica like cauliflower or cabbage, which all have these lovely, perfectly round seeds. I prefer to sow kale indoors in pots or in modules, but you could always direct sow if the weather is kind. Again, add your seed starting mix to your container. Use your finger to make a small hole about one centimetre deep. Then sow one or two seeds per module. If you're going to sow multiple seeds per cell, then you'll need to thin them out later. And then cover with more mix and tap the soil surface so that it's a little bit firmer. You can also do this for cabbages, cauliflower, broccoli, and you can do it for Brussels sprouts too. Although I don't really like them and I'm not gonna buy them from a supermarket even to show you guys, sorry. However, I have heard that homegrown taste that much better, so I will be sowing my own and trying to grow some this year. You can also sow purple sprouting broccoli, which I've been growing over winter. But one brassica I haven't mentioned yet is the radish, which grows stupendously quickly and you can direct sow. They are very, very cheap to buy in the supermarket. However, they only take about a month to harvest and with weather this good, I think now is the perfect time to get growing. As the month moves on and we move into spring, and if the weather continues to be balmy, then it'll be time to start sowing warm season crops. One I particularly want to point out is celery, and that's because this plant here survived the winter. How cool is that? Now, I don't particularly enjoy eating celery, and it turns out neither did my chickens, so it's not just me being fussy. But if you enjoy eating celery, then March is a great time to get sowing. Celery is closely related to carrots and parsnips, and you could direct sow all of these now if the weather stays kind. But I'm a big fan of growing carrots in containers, and if you want to grow yours that way, then I made a video about how to do that, which I'll link in the description, and maybe I'll add a card up here too. 
sow your seeds into pots towards the end of the month and celery should be ready to transplant after the frosts and then ready to harvest by the summer, maybe even in July or in August. While the root veg will take a little while longer, parsnips could take until the autumn, so it's best to get going early. But I'm a fan of Chantenay carrots because they're tiny, fast to harvest, and you can grow them in containers like this. And it looks like I missed a couple. You can also sow peas in March. You can direct sow some of the hardier varieties or you can start them off indoors. But if you are going to sow your peas into pots, be sure to use deep enough containers. I started mine about six weeks ago in these cell trays and I didn't transplant them. And already they're starting to flower. And that's because these plants are very stressed. Their long tap roots haven't had enough space to grow and they look pretty darn root bound. That's why you often see growers starting their peas in toilet rolls to give the tap root a long enough space to grow. You can also start broad beans in March and given the weather, I probably wouldn't try starting them inside and instead planting them directly in the ground. You can also keep growing salad leaves, almost perpetually really. You can start growing things like spinach, rocket, lettuce and pak choy and it is a little bit windy today so I'm not going to show you how to sow them. However, here's some lettuce that I started for a recent video. Uh, this lettuce that I started for a recent video needs one more transplant before it'll be ready to go in the ground after the frosts. Although again, like with the peas, it probably should have been transplanted a little sooner. You can also sow seeds like leeks for a harvest in the summer and towards the end of the month, you could think about planting onion sets. Sunflowers are another crop that are easy to forget, but they are both a crop and a flower that's helpful for wildlife and my favorite marker for tracking the progression of the season. Sow seeds towards the end of March or in early April, watch them sprout through the spring, grow tall towards the summer solstice, and then feed the wild birds and decay through the winter. And if you haven't sown them yet, then I urge you to get going on your chili peppers, your sweet peppers, your aubergines or eggplants, and of course, my favorite, the tomato. The longer you leave it, the longer you'll be eating the supermarket versions. But if you get going now, then there's still every chance you'll get a harvest in July or August, depending on the variety. Grow lights like this have a bad reputation. So I decided to test them to find out if you can grow tomato seedlings without them going leggy. And it turns out you absolutely can, as the test results in this video show, if you get the right distance and pick the right varieties, you can grow tomato seedlings without them going leggy. So if you haven't started your tomato seeds yet and want to get the right grow light set up, I'll see you up there. Otherwise, as always, happy gardening.